Hello everyone, my name is Chen Xi Wang, a postdoc from UCLA CIS department. Today, I will introduce our work, SAML, a memory disaggregated managed the runtime. This work is done with a great team, Hao Ran, Shi, Yuan Qi from UCLA CIS department, Zhen Yuan from MIT, Khan from Texas A&M, Michael from Ohio State, Rawe, Mia, and Harry from UCLA. First, it's about the background of the disaggregated data center. Recent industry trends suggest a paradigm shift towards disaggregated data centers. Each resource type is built as a standalone blade and connected by the network fabrics. As the picture shows, CPU servers, memory servers, and storage servers are connected by the infinite band. The CPU server has a powerful computing resource and a small amount of memory as a local cache. The memory servers are used as a second tier memory. The end-to-end -end network latency is around 10,000 microseconds. The network bandwidth can reach up to 10,000 gigabytes. Hardware resource disaggregation is good for resource utilization, hardware elasticity, and heterogeneity. Let me introduce the process execution model in this work. When an application is launched in the disaggregated cluster, the process can span multiple servers. In this work, we can do process span only one CPU server and multiple memory servers. We only launch the one process, but it's easy to extend to multiple processes on multiple CPU servers. The process runs on the CPU server. When the process memory footprint exceeds the capacity of local cache, its data will be swapped out to memory servers. The local cache access latency is around 60 nanoseconds. The memory access latency to remote memory servers reaches up to 10 microseconds, which is 150 times slower than accessing CPU server's local cache. Most of the previous works focus on semantic agnostic optimizations such as reducing or hiding the remote access latency, or design a prefetch algorithm to reduce the remote access frequency. These works all assume the applications have a reasonable data locality. However, this assumption is usually not true for cloud applications, written in managed languages. The managed language applications run on a runtime. The runtime reserves a range of water space from the OS as a Java heap. The runtime uses a garbage collection, GC, to reclaim that space on the Java heap. The GC has two major phases, tracing and reclamation. The tracing is a reachability analysis and is used to find the live data. The reclamation is used to compact the live data together. Besides, unlike the native applications, usually operating on primitive data structures, the matched language applications operate on data-oriented data structures. All these characteristics make the matched language applications have poorer data locality than native applications. Next, let's understand the problems of managed applications. Programs operating on object-oriented data structures usually have poor data locality. Take the object array as an example. It may contain an object graph with millions of objects. Memory access on the object graph has two characteristics. It's a random memory access and a point-chasing memory access. For this kind of memory access, it's hard to predict the access pattern, and it's also latency sensitive. When the managed applications 
run on disaggregated cluster. Second cause excessive swap in and out operations, which will kill the performance. The second problem is the resource racing between applications and the GC. Sometimes runtime will utilize the concurrent GC phase to reduce the GC pause time. For example, the G1 GC, which is the default GC or Oracle JDK is version 9. The concurrent GC threads co-run with application threads on the CPU server. This is for both the local cache and RDMA bandwidth with application threads. As a result, the application is slowed down due to the lack of hardware resources. This slide shows the performance of the Spark applications running on the disaggregated cluster. The execution time is normalized to the baseline, which has no swap operations. The cache ratio means the percentage of the CPU local cache to the total memory. From the chart, we can see that for the 25% cache ratio, both application and the GC slow down significantly. As we analyzed before, the GC is on the critical path. First, GC increases the pause time. Second, GC slows down the application's execution time. To solve the pro locality of managed applications, we have two major insights. The first insight is to offload part of the GC tasks to memory servers where the data is located. The GC offloading has several benefits. First, GC is memory intensive. It's a good fit for the weak compute on the memory servers. Second, near memory computing can provide very high throughput. And finally, GC can run concurrently and continuously on the memory servers. Our another insight is that we can utilize the GC to adjust the data layout for the applications. Based on this insight, we propose the same rule, a disaggregated manager runtime. We have three main challenges to design a disaggregated runtime. The first is what memory abstraction to provide. We propose the universal Java heap. A normal DVM runs on the CPU server. It can access the whole Java heap. A lightweight DVM is launched on each memory server. They can only access the Java heap range assigned to them. The lightweight DVM is a trimmed DVM designed for the memory server with weak computer results. The objects are allocated on the CPU server and they will keep the same virtual address when they are evicted to the memory servers. And then the lightweight DVM can treat the evicted objects without address translation. The CPU server memory works as a software management inclusive cache. The application allocates objects on the CPU server local cache. When the local cache is full, the code and the dirty page will be evicted to memory servers. If the pages are freed by GC, Sam will unmap the virtual pages and reset them to init state. The clean pages will not be evicted to the memory servers. The second challenge is what tasks should be offloaded to the memory servers. We offload the tracing tasks to memory servers to handle the evicted data. The tracing tasks are memory intensive and they don't need much computing resource. The memory server tracing can also run concurrently with applications running on the CPU server. Besides, we keep a GC phase on the CPU server for data space reclamation and compaction. Because the CPU server needs to extensively coordinate with applications and the memory server tracing, we let it run in stop the world mode. The applications will be suspended during the CPU server GC phase. During the stop the world window, 
the data space on both CPU server and the memory servers will be compacted. After the CPU server JC, the applications on the CPU server and the JC tasks on the memory server will be resumed. And then, we need to select the data to be traced by the memory servers. In Samuel, Java Hive is divided into regions. Samuel does a region-based JC in each server to avoid conflicts between CPU server and memory servers. A region being traced by the memory server cannot be written by the CPU server at the same time. We propose a mechanism to detect the CPU server eviction during the memory server tracing. Only when most of the pages of region are evicted to the memory server, the regions can be traced by that memory server. The memory server traces each region based on the region's age. Because, because according to the generation hypothesis, newly allocated objects are more likely to die. So, trace the young regions can reclaim space more efficiently. For each region, the collector needs rules to start tracing. The rules of each region come from the stack of variables and other regions. GVM maintains a right barrier to recall all the cross-region reference on the, stop on the CPU server. During the CPU server stop the world GC, uh, Samuel scans the stack of variables and the records of the cross-region reference to build the tracing rules for the regions to be traced by the memory servers, and then send the tracing rules to each memory server. As we have mentioned, a CPU server GC is necessary in the main collection phase. First, the CPU server is responsible for tracing the regions cached on the CPU server cache. Second, the CPU server GC utilizes the stop of the world window to reclaim the data space on both the CPU server and the memory servers. The CPU server GC is also responsible for adjusting the data layout for the live objects. The third challenge is how to design the swap system for a disaggregated runtime. None of the current swap system is robust enough to support distributed workloads, such as Spark. We developed a swap system based on the NVMe over fabrics. Our swap system has two message paths, the data path and the control path. The control path is used by the applications to transfer small metadata. The data path is connected to the paging system for excessive swap operations. We add some function support to the swap system for SAMR. For example, we let the runtime get more information from the kernel. We also add some optimizations. For example, utilize the infinite band scatter to speed up data transfer. This slide shows the experiment setup. We run SAMR on a full server cluster one CPU server and three memory servers. The CPU server has two CPUs with 16 cores. We use C group to limit the CPU server's memory usage. We use two cores on each memory server. The CPU server and the memory servers are connected by the infinite band. The bandwidth of the infinite band is 40 gigabits per second. This slide shows the overall performance. We use the eight workloads from both Spark and Flink. The baseline is running with no swap operations, and the execution time is normalized to the baseline. The NVMe over Fabrics is a network protocol used to communicate between host and storage server via the RDMA. The RAM disk is a virtual block device resizing memory. It's mounted at the swap partition on the CPU server. The RAM disk has no RDMA communication overhead. This is why running on the RAM disk usually has a better performance than running on the NVMe over fabrics. We evaluate the 
performance in two local cash ratio, 50% and 25%. We can see that the average slowdown for several is 8% or 32% for 50% local cash and 25% local cash, respectively, compared to both NVMe over fabrics and RAM disk. Sam improves the performance for both application and the GC. This slide shows the memory server tracing performance. In this chart, we compared the tracing performance of a single car between memory server and the CPU server. On the memory server, we adjust the CPU frequency from 2.6 GHz to 1.2 GHz. The CPU frequency of the CPU server stays 2.6 GHz. From the column of the throughput, we can see that the tracing throughput of the memory server is about 8.8 times higher than the CPU server. After we lower the CPU server frequency to 1.2 GHz, the memory server tracing throughput is still 3.4 times higher than the CPU server. The low throughput of the CPU server is caused by the excessive swap operations. We can see that the CPU utilization of memory server is quite low. For a single call, 1.2 GHz, its average CPU utilization is around 20, 29%. The memory server can finish the tracing quickly. So we can get the conclusion. The weak compute on the memory server is already powerful enough to do contiguous and concurrent tracing. So, at the end, we can get the conclusions. Several achieves superior efficiency on the disaggregated cluster, where two things. First, a co-design of the runtime and the swap system. Second, a careful coordination of different GC tasks. For example, the tracing on the memory server and the compaction on the CPU server. We can also see that the disaggregation performance could benefit much more from a redesigned runtime than a semantic agnostic optimizations. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me, or you can send me an email later. Thanks.